Okay, now I gotta change my view. So we're back. Right. Can you hear me? Uh, I can. Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, three and a half hours later, Corey finally got it figured out and got her other stuff done. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Corey and Amber Zoom meeting, 2 p.m. Monday, postponed several times this morning due to technical uh, in inability. But we think maybe we have it now. We hope. So Amber wanted to do a little chat with all of you. And um, I'm IROC Knits. Uh, I R O C Knits is Corey spelled backwards. And um, Amber and I have podcasted together before. I'm Yarn Hoarder on Instagram and Amber Lindemann on Ravelry. So we thought that honestly, this really is just something that I needed to do. I've been having struggling with. Uh, abandonment, <laughs> loneliness, and quad. And I, as an extrovert, that doesn't all work well for me. And um, so having something to do this morning that really, like, I needed to work on it and work on it hard just helped me prepare and get something together that was new and different and got my brain kind of moving instead of sitting in the chair and finishing Tiger King and watching have you start start Tiger King? Yes, I finished yesterday. That's another reason that I have the rules. It was something. Yeah. I think episode two, for those of you who haven't um, heard about Tiger King, it's a, it's a documentary on Netflix that's just crazy. Just crazy. And I think on on episode two, I don't, I didn't knit a stitch. I literally sat with my mouth gaping open the whole time because it went from crazy to crazier to crazier to crazier. But I would like to put I it to didn't think I could watch it because I thought it was going to show a uh, horrific animals. That was my turn. And although there is abuse, it is not, they, it is not gratuitous. Like they don't show a lot of the really, you know, bad things that could happen to animals other than that they're in cages and you may or may not agree with that. But I just thought it was going to be, you know, kind of give me nightmares or make me really queasy. And then it's just the people that are, <laughs> that make you queasy. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, I started it and then I just sat in the chair and knit all day, which is, you know, so many of us for so many years have said, I just want, I wish I could just stay home and knit. And now we can, and it's worse, right? Because you can't go anywhere. Like you're not supposed to go anywhere. And that part is really bothering me. I don't know why. Um, I, you know, I commented to a lady yesterday on Instagram who was mad because there were so many people out and about. And I said, some, some people are just going for a ride. I don't, you, I don't, we used to do that when I was young. My dad would Sunday night, let's go for a ride. And we drive into the country and we go for a ride. But Ross sat, I, I, he came back and we're supposed, I went for a ride. Because, and right, we have time. There's the inclination to maybe go see. We walked on a path yesterday in my neighborhood. I walked them before. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been back this way. And I said, seriously? And he, yeah, it, you, you're just kind of trying to fill time. We went for a ride last night uh, in the station wagon, which was fun. But um, the kids, the kids didn't go with us. They were doing other things um, here at home. But I just said, do you want to go for a ride? And he said, like old people. And I said, yeah. <laughs> Yes, let's go. Because I know that that was what Rick's grandma used to do. Like, I mean, in her 80s, they, she all she wanted to do was to be taken for a ride. And it was really nice. We just drove through. We wanted, we didn't even think. We went out to the state park because the state park you can drive and usually see turkeys and deer and things. And of course, the state park was closed. I, of course it was. We didn't even think that it would, you know, think about it at all. But we just drove through the country and it was nice. I think we'll keep doing it. Yeah, it was really, but we didn't get out, you know, but yeah, we were, we were out and about. I but. took a path up town a little bit ago. I had to run to the UPS little bin that you throw it in. And I drove up and through the town to make the trip just 
two minutes longer because I live in a town that is, you know, suburb that is this big. But it, because it was going to be my out, my time that I was out you know, for a moment, and I thought, okay, I'll just drive and see, you know, if, if there's anything going on. And there were, I know, a number of cars driving around, and I think people are just, you're having better, it's not pouring rain, it's supposed to. So, yeah, that's the thing. Anyway. Well, do so we Amber and I No, go ahead. I was going to just talk about what we were going to do. You go for it. Oh, no, you say it. I'm I was, was going to say, we just um, pulled up some whips to talk about. Um, we FaceTime all the time, but thought that we would try this through Zoom. So hopefully the quality is okay. Um, we've never done this before on Zoom. So if it's not, we're really sorry, but. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to probably edit it. I tried to figure out, I'm recording it cloud, and then that I needed to practice this morning, and I had to find it on the cloud and then see the how big it was to see how long it would take to download, which it took quite a bit of time. And then I had to figure out whether or not I could upload it to edit it. And I think maybe I could, but we're not, probably not gonna bother with it. You know, if we, if one of the dogs starts to bark or holler or whatever, and we get in, you understand, I think. Yeah, we, we would yep. copy the, um, some of the other people who share whips all the time. And I really, this is another thing I needed to do. I have talked about this with other Zoom meetings with knitters is that I needed to take a hard, long look at my whips and make a decision if I'm going to continue working on them or not and finish those things up. And so this will be really good for me. I, I only grabbed about half of them off the tree. So there's the opportunity for another Zoom in the future <laughs> on my end. <laughs> well, I... I don't have a ton. Um, here, I'll, I'll start. What, do you want to do one yeah. back and forth? Okay. So no, I, had, I had that hard look at my whips um, a couple of years ago. To be completely honest, most of my whips throughout my entire knitting, um, the period of time that I have knit, have always been sock whips because I always had a million socks on the go. Um, and so I don't have a lot of shawl whips or sweater whips or anything. And um, I did pull some things out a couple of years ago. And since then, with the exception of socks and blankets, I've really kept just one or two things on the needles all the time. And then just worked on that while also working on socks. And so I didn't bring up piles and piles of socks. Um, no. I brought I brought up a little bag of socks that just need heels that I might show, but I do have a couple of other things. And I brought some blankets because I thought that would be fun. But the first, the first whip that I have that is pro that's a very active whip is I'm making a Yowza Way It Shawl, which is a Susan B. Anderson pattern. Um, she has a number of those shawls, one, two, three, and four, I think, and this is the original. It's my favorite shape. But the reason she has so many is the whole premise for those of you who, who weren't paying attention in, I don't know, four or five years ago, whenever she released them all, maybe it hasn't been that long, was um, it was supposed to be a pattern made from start to finish with just one skein of Miss Babs Yowza. And then the one, two, three, and four, the differences are the shapes. So one is a crescent shape and one is like a half pie and one has uh, seams where it lays on your shoulder. And anyway, number one is the crescent shawl and it's my favorite. It has a ruffle and I am making it out of Miss Babs Yowza in the surprise colorway. Like the word surprise, but with a Z-A instead of an S-E at the end. Um, and this is where I'm at. It's like a pink and purple and white. Okay. And I really like it. Um, the thing, I don't know if you know this about Miss Babs, <laughs> excuse me, is, uh, you know, because most of her skeins are not necessarily one of a kind, but when you dye a skein like this, you know, it's always going to turn out differently from skein to skein. And so you can um, leave notes in your order. And I said the one with the most pink in it was my, my oh, comment. Oh, idea. So, yeah, so they... Um, they picked it out and you can't necessarily see, but a lot of these white bits are very lightish pink as well. So it's really pretty. Um, I brought, cause I just finished one. This isn't, this is going to be my third one that I've knit. It's my second one that I'm keeping. I brought the finished one that I finished a little bit ago. So you can actually see what it looks like. So this is the shawl. It's a crescent shawl. And the first one that I knit, I did not add the ruffle because I didn't know how the recipient would take 
no, I'm sorry. I didn't add the Pico edge. I did add the ruffle. ruffle. I didn't add the yeah. I didn't add the Pico edge because I didn't know how they would feel about it. And honestly, I didn't really want to do it. But I did do the Pico edge for this one, and I absolutely love it. But I'm pretty sure on Ravelry, people have not done the ruffle, and they've done a ribbing instead. So if you are not a ruffly person, but my favorite part is that it curls on the ends. Love that. But anyway, yeah. so that's yeah, my I, one. I love it with the ruffle, and I love it with the Pico. Me too. And I think it's it the, it, I at think least it makes it. I think it with makes the peak it. or with, uh, yeah, I do too. I really like it. And with, at least with shawl number one, um, I have, it, I have, I've purchased all of them, but I've never knit any of the other ones with shawl number one. It's literally one row back and forth. That's it. Just one row. The, uh, you do still need to buy the pattern though, because the way she has it written is it's a weighted pattern where you start with X mount, you go until you have X mount, and then you do this. And then once you have X mount, then you start your bind off. And so there's still a lot of information in the pattern, even though it's only one row, but it's just mindless. You can just, and that's kind of what you need in, in quarantine 2020 right now, or at least that's what I need. My um, yeah. stress level has been super high, right? So as I'm sure many, many people's has been. So anyway, that's whip one. So I'm really excited about that. It's a very active whip. I probably cast it on, you know, Oh no, I think I cast it on the middle of March. I know that for a fact. So yeah, it hasn't been on the needles very long. What do you have? Okay, well, I brought this one. You know this one very well. This oh, is this is my rail trail sweater all over color work. And you're changing color all the time. And you're making these V's and these X's and then the pattern row changes as well, yet it's similar because, I don't know, if you, you're making a, in some of them, X in others, and then it, and so it's challenging to follow the chart because you feel like you know the rhythm, but you're on the wrong row in your head, right? So you have, you're kind of, and I really was not a fan of the raglan, uh, shaping there. So I now I have gone and kind of thought about it and decided that I was gonna I'm gonna put brown um, crocheted chains on the top of that raglan because the increases are not in color on that raglan. And so you have gaps because you tie those ends up. And uh, this was out of uh, make stuff. Here's I'll show you what it's really supposed to look like. It's so pretty. So uh, Jill Dripper makes stuff um, uh, yarn, which I, you know, I yarn, and that's what I made my Rhinebeck sweater out of. It comes in these giant put-ups. They're just, they're huge. I've knit with this since I started the sweater. Okay. And it's the Mulhunk yarn, which is soft. It has, definitely has a rustic has 370 yards um, of lamb's wool and it's five stitches to the inch on a three or a four um, a needle. So a fairly, you know, fairly small needle, but really fun. I, I will take this back out. I had a sweater recently, a quick knit, a bulky sweater. I started the Ursa out of El Rey, we, <laughs> El Rey Chunky. Um, and so I, I worked on that on Saturday instead of picking up one of these old ones because I knew we had talked about maybe doing this. And so I will go back to working on this. And once I get into it again, just at about at the point where I'm going to divide through the sleeves, which will make things much easier. And then I can, I'll just, but right now with that going on and changing colors, it, oh, it's going to be really pretty, but kind it's of a, a mess. I, I love it. Um, and I love Jill Draper's yarn and, um, that is just such a pretty sweater. And I think it's a Corey sweater. You know, it's, it's really, really pretty. I would never knit that for myself. Um, just because I wouldn't want to put the effort in to make that for myself. Like I would wear it if someone wants to make it for me, <laughs> but I would not <laughs> knit it for myself. No, it's well, okay. Well, I'm knitting. Would you say? For sure. Yeah. 
it's a lot of knitting for sure. I mean, intense knitting, you know, pack, making sure that you're doing increase on the right color, repeat so you don't get off. It, there's a lot going on. Okay, so I did bring one sweater over. I can go get another one if we if we need more. Run out of things to oh. Yeah. No. <laughs> Well, okay, so again, I brought, I apparently, I, I wasn't necessarily aware of this, but I'm a pattern repeater, um, if I find one I really like. So I, I would never, if someone would have asked me that, I would have said, oh no, I just like to knit them once. But apparently that's not true because I had a finished object of each of these two whips. So I'm working on a shore cardigan, and that's by Carrie Bostic Hogue, or however you say that. Um, I, have, right. I have the pattern right here. So that's who it's by. And it's called the Shore Cardigan. And it is out of this beautiful pink, out of Madeline Tosh Vintage, which is a worsted weight. And it's a head, I think. Yeah, it is. And it's so heavy. Have you knit with Madeline Tosh Vintage before? I have. So I, I mean, feel like it's kind of that Sun Valley worsted has yes. some, has, like it's heavier. I made Rick a sweater out of it, a Stephen West sweater. Um, I can't think of the, the word or the name. It's two colors and it has like a garter detail with, with contrast lines. Matt's made yeah. it before. Um, yep. I know what you're talking about. He, Rick doesn't wear it very often because he says it is so heavy. And again, but that's okay. So I had it in my stash and I'm using it. It's in the Molly Ringwald colorway, which they don't even make anymore, but I think it's beautiful. So I'm not that far, but I am past the sleeve in or the sleeve divide. So I should just pick it back up and go to town. Well, that's like, obviously far. I think once you get yeah. to that point, things get much easier. And there's, you know, a really nice depth of color. I am alternating stains because I always do. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, you've got little darker bits and lighter bits, but I really like it. It's just a regular raglan cardigan. I'm not doing it in the round. I'm doing it back and forth like it calls for. Um, anyway, it's too small for me currently, which is probably why I'm not knitting it. Um, Sure. I made a size that's a little bit smaller than what I should have made. I could pull it out, but I'm just going to finish it in the size that it is. But this is what the cardigan is going to look like because I finished this one. Um, so it is just a regular raglan v-neck. Is it a v-neck? Hang on. Nope. Nope. Scoop. Round. Scoop neck. That's probably why I like it so much is because, you know, I ran into that trouble with v-necks not fitting me right. I'm going to button yeah. this top so you can see how this lays. So yeah, that's the, that's the neckline. And then the rest of it's completely just plain knitting, but I really liked this detail on the cuff. The cuffs are super long and it's got this little pearl ridge and the same thing at the bottom for anybody who hasn't seen the pattern before, you've got the little ridge around the bottom and it's got a high low hem. You can see my short rows right there. Do you see those? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Start along the edge. So yeah, I really like it. Yeah, I think it's a great cardigan. It, yeah, it kind of dips in the back. It has kind of bottoms. Cause I made that one for the Virginia Beach um, knit along a year or two ago. And uh, <laughs> I had five raglan creases on that one instead of four, remember? And, uh, or, or three, I can't, I had I to think, start over because right, I think three ones were off. I think I lost a stitch mark. I wasn't doing the raglan. So then when I got down further, I was like, wait a second, what the, why does this look so weird? Yeah. So I had to start over, but I did mine in that multi variegated Miss Babs yarn and alternated stains. And I really do like that sweater. I think it's a really nice, straightforward cardigan yeah. and my, my love not of garter stitch. I did not do on the edges of this cuffs and the bottom of that sweater. You know, to each his own. But I right. just, I don't 
I don't have them on there. When you're pointing them out, I'm like, really? That has that? Because I don't think one has that. Of course it doesn't. I probably didn't do them. But the fact that yours doesn't just means you could add anything you wanted there. You could add a little stripe if oh. you wanted it in a different color. Or, you know, sure. you could do it for sure. a thousand. This is so funny. I haven't knit on this sweater since maybe September and look at me I'm like well I'll just knit on this for a minute while we talk <laughs> yeah, if you're stuck okay, what do you have makes it all right this is my ink and brass sweater it's an everyday sweater by Danny Sunshine um, it is a striped fingering weight I know you're going I don't even know that you have that on the needles if you take that down, the look on my face was exactly that. I'm like, what is that? You are, you're going to, as soon as I show you the yarn, you're going to go, oh, because it doesn't, mine wasn't looking like that. Oh, gotcha. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my Prairie Girl yarn. And um, I wanted to knit that, uh, those two colors together. So it was this, that's blowing out. It's not quite that fluorescent. And then this one. And so I was going to stripe it and uh, in fingering, what I had it probably, oh, I don't know, four inches in and <clears throat> stripes were not wide enough. I knit back because the variegated has so much pink in it that when the pinks line up in the stripes, it didn't look variegated. Like I was alternating badly, if that makes sense, trying yep. to do two by two rows thinking that that would be even four by four, I think I tried. And I didn't swatch part of it, I don't think. And so I wasn't aware that where it actually lines up, it just looks, see that part really looks straight. It just, it wasn't working. But then, yeah. I, then I was just playing around and doing five, two and four, four and four. So now I'm gonna rip back to the, um, to the neckline <clears throat> and I'm wider I think all the way down and it'll be I did rip back some and get in the bag because again that's when things get put aside for me when I'm swinging the pattern and I can't kind of make it a easy knit I, I can't convert it in my head to the thing it needs to be which is easy <laughs> if I'm well, paying attention or I'm making decisions Well, that's the yeah. same thing with this one is I wasn't happy with the fit of the hot pink one and this was the exact same size. And so I'm like, oh, well, I'm not going to like the fit of it. And so I'm going to put it away, but I am going to be, yeah, it's fine. I really do like it. And I love that ink and what'd you call it? Ink and brass? Brass. Yeah. I feel like it, um, it's a fingering weight sweater that comes in extra small, small, medium, large, XL, 2XL, and 3 but it only goes from 30 to 52. So okay. it's about some, but not a ton. And then it needles. And I loved that it was a raglan because then I wasn't going to have to deal with the striping getting with sleeves. If I put in a sudden sleeve or, uh, you know, continuous, contiguous, the sleeve weird. So I liked the fact that it was fun. I just didn't like my striping because my yarns yep. matched up to at some places. I knew you would remember. It's just that I had to set it aside. Well, it, it's really pretty. Okay, oh, well. Yarn, uh, oh, and she's not dying anymore. Um, untwisted tree yarn, people, people you know, that's, why I didn't write say it, but yeah. Well, I'm, and that's funny. Well, not that's not funny. It's funny that you have a discontinued yarn because I just showed one. And also, what I'm getting ready to show you also can't get, but you could still make the pattern. Okay, so the thing that I have been working on most recently, um, I finished Heidi a blanket, which I haven't even taken finished object photos of yet. Again, I don't think I'm alone in being in a funk right now, right? And so I haven't even felt like, because I have almost all the ends woven in. I have maybe like 25 ends left to weave in on Heidi's blanket and I could take it out and go take pictures of it and I still haven't even done that. But since I finished an afghan, I moved on to another afghan. 
And this is just granny squares. I did not bring them all over because I have to look like I'm bringing this whole tote. <laughs> move. I got to move a dog. Move. Move, buddy. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah. Well, now he's irritated. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't bring them all because I, I'm going to have 283 total. Um, I had this morning when I woke up, I only needed 20 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need 13 more and I'm done with 283 squares. So I've made 270. So I'm using Liberty Wool, which they don't make anymore. Unfortunately, Classic Elite went out of business, but you could still find it maybe on D stashes on Ravelry. Uh, probably not in the quantity that you need to make a blanket like this, but um, it's a really good, even if you're not having this in mind, Liberty Wool's a great wool. It was just, it's got good stitch definition. It's, um, it's just really nice. And it came in two separate types of yarn. It came in solid colors like this. And it also came in variegated colorways like this. See this gonna, maybe that's not the best example. Let me see if I've got, I'm down to just a couple bowls here. This one, you can maybe see a little bit better. It, when you flip them inside out, they have random color changes. Um, and I say random because sometimes the colors don't always seem like they would meld into one another, but right. I'm just making granny square after granny square after granny square. And I don't block my squares when I join. Okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm just starting with one ball of yarn and going. And so every square, even if they're made out of the same ball of yarn, here, let me show you. These, these were all made out of the same ball. This one, this one, this one, this one, and that one. All came from one ball of yarn because it just kind of changes on its own. It's not self-striping. No, it's, it's crazy. And so that's why I thought it would be so fun to make these granny squares is it would look so scrappy like I made them out of all the different scraps when in fact there is there's no ends to, well I've already woven the ends in on these but this was just you know a start and a finish not all the different the colors so I mean I have tons and tons of these squares 270 of them and I have two of them put together so you can see how I'm going to put them together I'm putting them down putting them together with this color which I think is called earth, but I don't know. I can't find it on the tag. It just has a, a color number, but it, I had bought it on clearance in these bags of yarn. I think I bought it from webs. Uh, the way it came, comes in these bags, I think it came from webs back in the day, but um, I'm taking it. I'm going to join, going to crochet them together as I go. So what that means for those of you who aren't crocheters is on this last round, because I'm adding one more round of this kind of almost army colorway. And you, like when I'm going to add the last round to this one, I'm gonna add it, add it, add it. And then on that last little bit, I'm going to join it. So you can kind of see right here where they're joined together. So as you're adding that last row on, you stitch the squares together. That's called join as you go. So yeah, I I'm really excited. That. I didn't know that that's how you would put those together. I didn't realize. I, but I, I could go ahead and put borders on all of them and then sew them together. Or, okay. or I could single crochet them together. Um, there's, you know, all the different ways. <clears throat> but I like this method. Um, if it was a really, really heavy yarn, it does tend to pull right there. But once you get all of them together, it gives more support and it doesn't pull at all. And I really like that. So yeah, um, I'm making two blankets, one for RJ, one for Heidi. And the 283 I squares. Like that. I like that. Because I thought it was kind of muted and I thought it would just kind of dry. I really like it. I'm surprised because it's kind of that khaki yeah it's yeah. like an Earth. olive cup <laughs> yeah. yeah now i mean if i had it to pick like if i was picking a colorway right now i would pick a gray or a cream or something yeah. you know to really make those colors pop but when i held up this one bag i wasn't being completely honest 
I, I, I wasn't ratting you out. I didn't say anything. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I'm using this color. <laughs> So I just want to get it out of my stash. And um, also, I do really like what I'm making in Afghans. Not that I have to, and I definitely haven't done it in the past, but I do like to keep the brand the same because then it washes the same. And so these Afghans will be going with my kids when they leave the house. And so I know that, you know, they're not going to it's a super wash yarn, but I know they're not going to, you know, like felt a stripe of it or something, you know, because I used different kinds of yarn. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's what has consumed my days. Um, whenever I picked this back up, I think I still needed 120 squares. So in the last week and a half, I've made basically 100 squares. You're just so fast. We were talking the other day and you're hanging just going like nothing and I mean I know you've had years of practice and it, you know you just yep. get good at it like with knitting but yeah you really can get a lot of those done quickly yeah and if it wasn't Mom, having go ahead no go ahead we are still getting the hang of this yeah so I'm sorry to everyone if we keep talking over each other but you go ahead you're talking about your blanket I said as long as you don't mind sewing them together or like crocheting them together so that they don't sit in bins or tubs forever as squares because you hate the finishing part i do um i don't mind this because um they're for the kids now i will say i should have brought that up i'm not 100 percent sure where it is i made a stunning afghan stunning for heidi and then because she was a little kid and she said what she thought, I was making another one at the same time. And the one I was making for her, she didn't know was for her. And she told me how much better she liked the other one that I was making, <laughs> which is fine. And so I gave her the other one that I was working on. And this one is their African violets and they're made out of three or four different colors and the blanket's completely finished and I haven't woven a single end still to this day. It's probably eight years ago. Maybe one of these days, but no, I don't mind weaving in the ends on these because they have a, you know, like I would have liked to, I couldn't decide. Maybe I was thinking I was going to give them to them for Christmas, but maybe I'll just give them to them when they leave the house. I don't know. I haven't decided. Maybe I'll probably give them to them for Christmas. Lots of kids stick around now these days and in this certain situation that we're going through right now, maybe never yeah. be able to go oh, right now. Yeah, no, I think the finishing, you have to think about the fin how you're going to finish a project before you start it. Because if it's a, like, if you don't want to weave the ends in, then you can't do something with stripes. Like, if you hate weaving in ends, then, you know, that's, I don't mind weaving in ends. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I think if you hated crocheting squares together, then that crocheted blanket is probably not for you. <laughs> Because you're right. gonna crochet them all together, right? That kind of thing. And I think I got used to because grainy squares are my favorite, but grainy squares are what I made when I was a child and my grandmother taught me how to crochet. Because I you, she didn't have money to help me, and mom and dad aren't weren't just gonna go to the store and say, Well, here's seventy five dollars, buy yourself a whole lot of yarn. So I would go when we would go to Walmart, I would get one skein of red heart yarn. And so unless I wanted an Afghan that was completely random striped, which I didn't, I made granny squares. And then I could put, because you never knew what color of yarn they were going to buy me or whatever. And back then, of course, this would have been um, the mid, mid to late 80s. They didn't just come in these great big pound put ups like they do now, super saver yarn, they call it. It was just red heart yarn. And a lot of times they came in itty bitty little skinny ones. So, but then sometimes, you know, if, if mom and dad were feeling generous, I might get the great big ones. So you never knew what you were going to get. And um, so I made granny squares then to um, help the, the aesthetic of the blankets, you know, whenever they were done to kind of work with what I had at the time. And so that's kind of. So if I don't know what kind of a blanket to make, I almost always 
gravitate towards a grainy square. So I really like it. But I should finish these squares today, which means then I will get to start laying them out. And then that, then the fun starts. Yeah, and that'll be fun to see that. Yep. Those all laid out. Someone's bound to ask um, what I'm wearing today. And this is my Mistral sweater. And that's how the yarn came. It was really interesting. I don't know if I can pull a piece of it. Uh, but it's quite bulky, almost like a shoelace. There. Did it come so from Stephen? Nope. It came from Virginia. That's how old this sweater is. I lived in Virginia and I went south of Richmond to um, a yarn store. She had a huge online presence too. Right? The cute thing about this sweater, now I've got to hold this up for all of you. Please. Oh, that's Look funny. at that pocket. And it's just the little fringes hanging on the top of the red pocket. So it's just a patch pocket sewn on. I was just gonna wear my red t-shirt today and uh, oh, now took a and you bra. <laughs> so you probably, and I, I put in earrings. I have those things in several weeks. Like, you know, intermittent showering. Is that what we call it? Just, you know, I know. I've been going for a walk so then I shower, but. I, I went in the closet and I was like something that's super old and it does have some bright colors in it. So it, it brightened the day. Pulled is this that, out. I had, um, go ahead. Is, is that sweater in your sweater class? No. I was saying, I, it's not, I didn't think I'd ever seen it before. I like it. So the yarn, I looked it up. The yarn is I'm Linny and it, it, I used 11 of it. And I call it this my project page on Ravelry. I got it at Yarn. That's the name of the Yarn. And it was in Richmond, Virginia. I don't think it's still, um, but it was, I started it um, and I knit it in February of 2005. That's, That's how fun. old it is. That's but fun. I have not gotten rid of it because it is a book. So it had quite a bit of positive ease in it you know fairly sloppy in the arms as far as fit goes and um, it doesn't close as well in the front as it used to <clears throat> if you know what I mean <laughs> but you know uh yeah it's laying floor just got big red patch pockets on it uh, pictures that was it like three years ago and so the pattern's not available anymore and the yarn's not available I don't use it in sweater class because you know people would say love that you know bright colored get it you'd have to find a variegated or something and it, it was an interesting um yarn construction yeah so I don't I have never used it in the class but I took of a bag this and I knew it was right away but I had I gone to a different zoom meeting this small book club and I went and I was like, oh, then falling off, that stinks. This double point or, uh, was broken off right at the tip, completely right at where it joins, right? So I can't even put back on. Um, here, well, I this one, but this is yarn that came on a cone. You're going to have this one too. I don't know what it is now. <laughs> So this is Ming yarn from Art Fibers. It was 520 on this cone and I was knitting a bob uh, sweater. That was gonna be my plan. Amber will know this now because then I was going to sew or knit this into it. Yeah. Remember this? I do. Look, I have these little copper beads hanging down on it like that. The yarn has it in there. And I had like, I um, maybe 10 skeins of it, little skeins of this, so I have it wrapped around a, a piece of car. And I was gonna knit into here at, at the top so that these little chains would hang around the yoke. And I still, because I'm crazy like that. I think it's gonna be really cute to have a I little yoke right up here. Not like all over, but 
so, but I, this is how much yarn I have left. I had two of these cones. And now I'm thinking that it might need to be a poncho with that just at the yoke instead of having to deal with um, sleeves. We'll have to see. I've knit this much of it. So I'd say that might be like 10 inches. So I'm not, I wouldn't be at the, for the underarm yet if I was going to divide. Um, so we'll see if I ever take this back out of the bag and make it, make this into, make this into this. To make you feel better, I just got up and got this. <laughs> I was going to say, I wasn't going to call you out, but you have some crazy yarn that you love too, that you think yes. is them. So I am so excited about this. Let's see if I can get it to come. This one, oh, they've got it like, look, there we go. I'm gonna hold this together with a light pink yarn and make a sweater. And when Heidi and RJ were up here the other day, I had it sitting I out on the window because I was, and <laughs> Heidi, and RJ said, what kind of yarn is that? And Heidi said, oh, you know she's making a sweater out of that. And I'm like, oh, yes. So look, it's just got long strands look of, that. it's like ecru, it's lace weight, and it has pom-poms. And I'm not we were born in different generations, but we have a little bit of the same fashion aesthetic. Not I will all things. Like, we're not the same in all the colors and stuff, but no. This is going to be so fun. This is Stephen B. Where did you get your palms? I can't remember. We were in Rhinebeck. Yes, at a yarn store. Shoot. It oh. was not a festival. It was that yarn store we went to. We went up the road. Yeah. yeah. And she had stuff on sale. I remember. But if you'll remember on the drive home, Matt took a picture of it and sent it to the buying agent at Stephen B. Because he said, that's something they would carry. So I love it. It is a Japanese yarn, I think. It's that Mondo fill. Yep. Or yep. however you say that. And it's this O share pom pom. And you can still get this. All you people just run right out there. Jimmy Bean's wool has it. This was not this was not a planned advertisement at all. But <laughs> well, this out this morning. I was like, oh yeah, I can I can talk about that. I'm going to make that into a sweater someday. That's really funny. Hey. Okay. My next one is also a crocheted one. Again, this um, quarantine has been really good for my pulling things out and try to finishing, finish them. I finished Heidi's blanket, which of course I didn't bring over. Um, I, I'm finishing these granny squares. I'm going to finish getting them put together. So then I opened up another bag to see a blanket. And you know... I'm, I'm finding this has happened now three blankets. This has happened all three times. I pull it out and I think I'm so much further than I am. I'm like, oh yeah, I probably only have like, you know, 40 more squares to make. Oh wait, no, you need another 200. <laughs> so this one is a really fun pattern in a really old book that they do not make, but you can still find it sometimes on used on thrift books or eBay, or possibly Amazon, although maybe not right now because I think Amazon's overloaded, but it's called The Ultimate Book of Scrap Afghans, and it's the American School of Needlework. And the pattern that I'm making, I have made before as a newlywed. I think I made it and gifted it to my in-laws. <laughs> it's this one right here. <laughs> and it's called the Starflower Retreat Afghan. And it has 12 different, um, it's, it's got 12 different motifs, so 48 individual little motifs that you then sew together. So I had some Knit Picks Brava, which is just 100% acrylic worsted weight yarn, and I'm doing it in shades of teal, which this works out really nicely because apparently, because Heidi's favorite color used to be green and she just told me her favorite color is teal now so great <laughs> I didn't know that when I started this but I got four different shades I don't know the colorway names I could look them up if anybody wanted to know them um if they messaged me on Ravelry I'm Amber Lindemann on Ravelry I could look them up um but and tell you because I'm sure the nitpick still carries all of them 
but yeah, so I have those four colors. <clears throat> I am, I have finished all of the centers. So since I had four colors, I made 12 each of all four colors. And then I'm going to border them in three different colors of gray. So it'll be four different colors of teal in three different colors of, of gray. And then I'll have 12 different motif, you know, 12 different big squares. And I have this one finished. Oh, good. See, oh, nice. And then there's, you can see it in the pattern photo. There's like a, a spike stitch. I don't know what it's actually called, but that's kind of what I'm calling it that goes around. See the little bit of white right there? Oh, yep. So then after, so right now what I've finished here in this square are the, like say the four coral ones and then the four, or and then the navy, and then it gets a border of white all the way around and then you join the white. So after this will be, and the whole thing will be put together with white. So it'll be very wintry, right? Like snow, that's why I picked these colors and the gray was it kind of reminded me of like January. Right, it's not Christmassy because right. yeah. then you would want to put it, you know, you wouldn't want to keep it out all year or all winter long. So, yeah. Although I don't know how many Afghans Heidi needs. Um, RJ very specifically told me this weekend that he feels like the perfect per Afghan to person ratio is three. So I guess I can only make him three. <laughs> But quilt, quilt to person ratio is an infinite number. He wants as many quilts as I'll make him, but Afghan to person ratio is three. Well, we have far more than 12 Afghans in our house. So I have broken that, but yeah. So this is the Starflower Retreat. And like I said, you may be able to, it's not on Ravelry. It is, but it's not, you can't purchase the pattern. But like I said, I've seen it on thrift books and I've seen it on eBay and it's a good, it's a good book. Um, this is my favorite pattern in it though is that one. And I, like I said, I've made it before. So I'm excited about that. And again, I thought when I opened this up, I, I don't know why I thought this. I thought every motif was done. And all Great. I had, to, and all I had to do was join it with white, put that little last edge and join it together. I thought that was it. I only have one motif done <laughs> and I haven't started any of the other ones. All the rest of them are just the centers, which is still a lot of work, but there's a lot more to go. Because in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll finish these two and I'll knock that one out. And I don't know that this is a knockout type gift quite yet. So I think this is probably not gonna be a finish in 2020, but hey, if we continue to have to stay in our house, it might be. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is another project that got ripped out and has never gone got never to it this is uh my remix sweater it's Morocco remix this is the stuff that's already discontinued not the light so it's the heavier weight stuff that has uh nylon cotton acrylic silk and linen in it and it is all kind of recycled fibers and when you wash it up it gets really soft and kind of kind of sweatshirty I've heard if you knit a sweater out of this it feels like a sweatshirt well I had um I don't know four skeins of this or five and then I had one skein of the cream and so I chose to do a yoked sweater <clears throat> pattern that's the one I chose a Brooklyn tweed by Jared Flood it's called Huron and I knit the yoke and I got all the way up here and I was carrying my cream color in my non-dominant hand and it was receding to the background because I didn't, you know, I don't have perfectly even tension on my sweaters and, you know, that's a whole nother thing that people can dominance, yarn dominance, color dominance, whether or not you have it. Um, but so I had to rip it out because our kind of skinny line. And something was more like a big zigzag would have been a better speed thing that had more than just one row of zigzag that was receding. So, so if I just would have carried it in the left opposed to the right hand, um, I know that now, but at the time, obviously I didn't. And I would, I sometimes alternate. And, and so I now have a new sweater design idea. Um, 
that I may use this for and, and add this to the top in doing this or any other. Um, it's part of the knit, the knit words series that I have. And, um, and I know you and I have talked about it before, but if, if I can get it to count, then I won't have to re-knit a whole sweater this on the yoke. So that's why it's been sitting tight because it wouldn't take me long to finish the would have done it. But if I use it as part of this whole knit word series thing that I don't really know when that's ever going to, like if it's all going to be a series or an ebook or not, if I'm just going to put it out one at a time, um, then this, this could just turn into that. So that's why it sits. Is that red or orange? It's orange, but it definitely has some tomato color to it. You know, it definitely does. Do I have anything that is okay? So this is um rot kind of my rust. See, it's really yep. red when you put it next to that. But if I put it next to um something else, and what is the color called? The color is called well they put the I hate that when they yeah, it doesn't have it's three nine nine six, but that doesn't help anybody. Yeah, it definitely ha is tomato orange. Does that make sense? Yep. It has um, definitely some red here. Here's my red shirt. <laughs> okay, yeah, yep. So it's I, not red as my red shirt, but, and the cameras don't do well with me. But that's that one that isn't going to be done until I figure out whether or not I use it as part of this design series. Did, so Matt, did Matt make that sh that sweater? Has he made that? Brooklyn Tweed? I don't, I don't think so. Um, I should, I should ask him because, um, I wonder if, if he would have trouble. I don't know. I don't think he did. So if you would have trouble with the yarn dominance on it as well as I did. If you guys are, are new to watching Corey, um, we have a friend, Matt, multi, multi-crafty guy, and he's a prolific sweater knitter. That's why I asked, and, you know, there aren't as many, obviously, um, he can't find as many sweaters for men as we can find for women. And so that's why I asked if he had made that before, because, um, you know, there's a, a limited amount. And if you knew how many sweaters that Matt has made, I feel like he's got to be getting up there on <laughs> 25. I think, I think he, um, I think he posted the other day that the, his last finish was 25, that he's got 25 sweaters done. Um, but I'm thinking about having, if this works well, I might have Matt Weir stuck at home in May, which I, I personally think will be. Um, then it's going to, you know, we're going to be here longer that I'll, I'll probably do some other interviews with some other people or have Matt show some sweaters on my podcast as well. Well, I think he's finished two or three since he's I, been on. Since, yeah. Oh, at least. <laughs> That's about all he's knit. Oh no, he's always got a pair of socks on for sure. Oh, that's true. He did finish some socks. Okay, speaking of socks, that's a good uh, segue. I brought a few pairs just so that you can see what they look like. Um, and I'll talk about um, really quickly how I knit uh, socks again. I start with the tube. I've talked about this before um, on the podcast that had me and Matt and Corey on it. So you can go back and look and it's the, the one with the thumbnail of all three of us waving. Um, I talk more in detail about how, but I start with a tube and then I knit a cuff and then I knit a toe and then I put an afterthought heel in. So if you want to hear a little bit more about that, you can go back and watch that, um, that episode. But I thought I would point out though, that out of a skein of a 100 gram skein of yarn, I can actually get two pairs of socks. So there are four socks here just waiting for heels. Um, I try not to make Heidi and I the same pairs of socks because it's hard when I do laundry to know which, whose drawer they go in. And these are completely they're the same size because we both wear a women's nine. So it's the exact same sock. It's just, you know, the stripes are a little bit out of order because they match on each pair matches, but the two pairs don't match because, you know, I didn't, I didn't worry about that. So I will gift a pair because I don't want Heidi and I to have the same, um, the same pair of socks. Cause that's, that's hard. Sometimes I'll do that. Well, if we make your heels pink. Cause you I could, I could do that. I was, you probably I wouldn't, but you could. Well, honestly, I could gift both pairs because I'm not really a cream-colored heel-toe kind of house, right? <laughs> we have 
we have three dogs in and a multitude of other animals and so i could give i could just give them but those are really fun that's knit spin farm yarn i made heidi this pair do you ever when you were knitting socks more did you ever use tweed no tweed was not as much a thing i did knit tweed socks um for the book uh, the book yep when we wrote the book because I found tweed, the, the bright tweeds, that's the issue, is that there were tweeds, but they were gray and cream and brown and tan, orange and blue and yellow and green. So I was listening, but I also real I was laughing. I didn't realize these two socks are two different sizes. Look, I'm holding the tops exactly level. Whoops. <laughs> so one is just a touch longer than the other. I don't care. I won't pull that back. But that's really funny because that means whenever I measured my tubes to put my heels and cuffs, I either um, measured wrong. Well, I'm sure that's what I did is I measured wrong. Oh, well, it's not a big deal. But I do like tweed. I had a really hard time when I was hand knitting tweed because um, I cranked these tubes on a circular sock machine and then I hand knit the heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, and I had a hard time when I was hand knitting the entire pair of socks. I wanted to detweet it. Like every time I'd get to one of those, I would want to pick it off. That's why I asked if you had knit them, like if, if that bothered you too. Yeah. Well, you know it does. I make little piles of guard hairs and alpaca and anything yeah. like that. I pick them all out, make a little pile. I'm terrible about that. So yeah, so I always want to detweet it, but you can't detweet it because it's part of the yarn, <laughs> like you're making your yarn thinner. But anyway, those are Heidi's, um, again, that's a discontinued yarn as well, but it was called Mint Chocolate Chip, which I thought was the perfect name for that yarn with those little specks in it. And then, I don't have the tag for this one, but these are Rick's, and look how long those tubes are compared to Heidi's because he wants his socks as long as possible. So you can see I've got a little tag there, ready, ready. They're already measured, I just need to put the heels in. I keep them, I tend to do things in batches. And so what I do is, as I finish the heels, or I'm sorry, the cuffs and the toes, I stick them in a bag. And then I'm gonna have this huge bag full of things that only need heels. I don't know why I do that. I don't know why I don't just finish a pair and move on and do another pair, but I think it's because I, I get in a cuff mode, and so I just do cuffs and cuffs and cuffs and then toes, and it's, it's how I work. Do you know what time we started? I can tell you what time I said, hey, I'm getting on now, 58 minutes ago. Okay. I just don't too long because I don't know about the upload speed. Okay, I have, this. I have one more blanket. What do you have? Oh, yeah, I have two. I have two more things, but I'll just show one. Perfect. Well, that'll because be perfect. Though. If you go, I'll go, you go. We can end on you because I started. Okay. So here is a sweater on the needles, uh, dark brown. And you could have thought that this was in a bag long enough that I would have said, I have no idea what this, what this was. Like it came out of the, here's the, the sleeves it's almost, there. It's almost done. I know. Ready to attach in the round. What I think it was a sweater for my dad or Ross. I think that it was turning out too small because when I pull it out and I'm gonna ribbing off, look, that is very big. Like that's a little bit bigger than, and that's the waist. <laughs> oh, so it's like a neckline, so, okay. And it does stretch, but it is probably more like a 40 than a 44 or something. And yeah. um, so, what I did was I ordered some yarn to make a color work yoke because I thought I could speak it and make it for me. And I, this is a, just a typical Corey faux pas is I went out and I found a pattern, which I don't know where it is. But it's here somewhere. I found a pattern, uh, like a flowered yoke. And then I went and bought pink and, um, teal and white and cream to put it on the top and yarn came and I think I got ready to join this in the round and cast it all on bought the wrong yarn oh <laughs> what way is this that? is where I bought like Aaron like it was way too thick the yarn was way too thick so now I have a whole yoke color patterns 
with no body and I had to go buy, back and buy a bunch of other colors to do the actual yoke in to match right. this weight yarn. So now I have this to make that work, this sweater work as a cardigan. If I take the bottom off, I think I'll just knit it um, looser or on a bigger needle, take the bottom off of here, and then I'll have a cardigan with a, like this floral motif at the top. I must have done the floor so much stuff here right now. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. It was just a faux pas, which is why it's back in a bag again, because I, I bought the wrong weight of yarn. Like who doesn't look to see what? So whatever. is that something now that you get it back out and you see that you're almost done, do you think that's something you want to leave out or are all these whips going right back on the tree? Um, no, it love to finish. If I don't finish it in the next two weeks um, or three weeks, like while, while we're temporary, I don't know how long we're in, in this. I won't do it because it'll get to be hot in summer. And I, yeah. this is so windy that I won't do it. But I, I really like to finish it. So if we stay, you know, locked down, it just can't be done right because I'm doing um, Kylie's blanket, which is here, which is what I was knitting on earlier. And I, I just so much, like it's getting so long. It's really like- Does I, she want this? No, she, she doesn't know. Never posted a picture on Instagram and she, um, she, she has watched me, but no, she's too busy studying to watch. So like, this is like my, I want to finish this during this time. And yeah. then the Ursa, I'm on the Ursa. I will happen if I don't do the Ursa right now is on the pieces and you're doing a half brioche stitch and you'll points what I'll never I'll never be able to know where I'm at like if I put that aside to start some of this stuff this it'll become the same thing that these were a little bit of a problem that I could jump couldn't jump over you know the fence on so I would absolutely love to this now that the yarn ordered and and it can become a, a that I mean it's just not a quarry color at all but if I put all the color at the top of it well, I can remind you in like a week and a half, because you said two weeks, I'll remind you. Okay, well, my last one that I brought was my Cozy Memories blanket, which I feel like everyone went through a stage and cast one of these on. This one is, I just had pulled it out and talked to Corey about it, um, I don't know, last week. And again, I think I'm going to pull it out and it's going to be a freaking six foot blanket and it's a baby size I measured it and it was, I believe it was 32 inches square or it's almost square. It's like maybe three squares shy of being square. And so 36 inches, if I'm thinking correctly, is what they recommend for a car seat or a baby blanket. So it's literally slightly smaller than a baby, a baby blanket, but I do love it and I will finish it um, at some point. I may be, if not, they can bury me with it like needles in, right? Just cover me up with it. But it really is pretty. I love these blankets. I think some people don't like them because they have um, control issues, right? Where they don't want all the randomness, but I love a randomness. Also, this blanket tends to be the ones, the one where, like if I bought mini skeins for a project, I would put those in a blanket. But I tend to use sock leftovers. Oh in this one because I remember who I made each of the pairs of socks for and that's a lot of fun um and some of them are just so cute like where is there's a Kirby Werby square in here look at this one this one's called uh, grandpa's suspenders sure yeah. grandpa's rainbow suspenders and she still sells that color so that's fun but the the pattern I'm using is oh and you know how the watermelon yarn was in for a while so yeah, yeah. And I made those for my niece's high school graduation. So see, that's why I love this blanket because I can look at them and think, oh, I made that. I made those for Rick. That was wool and vine skein. Um, yeah, so that's just a lot of fun that I can go back and look at it like that. I made, this was the first pair of socks I ever made for my dad. 
so you know things like that that's just a lot of fun for me but it's yeah yeah i mean the numbers are bigger than my squares what how many did you pass on Do you, roughly i think i think 30 i think something. i think 64. yeah you're much bigger than mine are i can use much smaller scraps but i feel like it takes forever to make any progress with the smaller squares i like them but it takes a long time to make a row and so if i were to do it again i might cast on a few more i only have you know this much mine is wide but i only have about this much done okay so i just counted and i have 30 stitches left on here so yes i think 64 um or something in there i yeah didn't deviate from the pattern at all i use kemper ray's pattern called the coziest memory or something like that the coziest memory i believe and see i'm in the middle of this square right here and i use um i use a circular needle for mine size yeah, two do a different decrease too because i used uh shelly kang's um yep. mitered square blanket and mine is not uh, i think your is your center double decrease and mine is or mine is in yours is whatever I, yours is mine yeah because i don't have that little um i don't have that little line it's just, yeah it's just two decrease two decreases smashed up against one another and it doesn't have that little line i like yep. the line but I hate doing a center double decrease. I don't know why. So that's why I picked yeah. this one. But yeah, that's it. It's, I, I mean, remember. it looks so big, right? I can be like, oh, it's so hard, but it's deceiving. It's 32 inches, that's it. <laughs> it folds up into a very tiny little square. <laughs> it could cover one dog. Yeah, and you know, if I didn't want it, and that is probably what will happen, is this will probably not be, for a full size bed, right? It'll probably be for a throw and not a giant blanket. Sure. All right, what's your last one? Okay. <laughs> this is a great. giant bag of El Rey chunky yarn, like uh, maybe 30 stains. Some um some are and here's balls that are, you know how much i love this yarn i bought it but i bought it how big is the bag because you just keep pulling it out <laughs> it's this size it's a big bag my, and i am making a top down raglan striped sweater cozy cardi like just uh i just cast on and I'm doing, you know, I'm gonna do raglan uh, increases from the neck and just randomly stripe two, four, two, two, four, four, two in all the colors that I have. And it'll just be all stripey. The problem that happened is that I didn't like lay out, this is how many greens I have, this is how many gold, this is how many purple. So I got going on it and then I was like, hmm, if I use this lavender, and this is all the lavender I have. I need to spread it out, right? So it needed some, just a little bit of planning so that I don't have all the colors at the top and then have four giant stripes at the bottom because I didn't have any other right. colors left. So, it, you know, it isn't as if it's not possible to figure this out, but I had so many of these in all these colors, but not as many in like this. So I, that's why it's in the bag, because I need to make a plan. And I make have full bags of this. Like I have 10, eight, 10 skeins of this also in my closet. These were like the singles that I went out and hunted down online, because this is the best yarn. You have a you, bunch of this. Do you want to know why? Because you told me it was the best yarn. <laughs> And my yarn store was going out of business, which then they decided at the last minute they weren't going out of business, but they went from being a huge space to a very tiny little space. And so it, she had liquidated all this yarn and you told me how amazing it was. And so I bought it all, all of it, every skein that they have. I have sweaters quantities in all the colors. And I have, and it, you went though, you're right though, because it's amazing. I felted slippers out of it. I've knit. Yep. A child sweater out of it like it's beautiful yarn and it holds up so well 
it's rustic. It isn't soft, like super soft, but it does not pill. Like it just, you can wear it and it won't pill. It, it, it worked up in a, like a Aaron weight. You could knit it tightly in a worsted weight. Um, it does, it did come in um, other weights of yarn. This was actually the chunky, but I knit owl sweaters out of this for everybody at one time. I have probably two or three. This is what I'm making my uh, Ursa out of right now because I had this color in a, a ton more skeins. I just really liked it at the time. And it was fairly inexpensive, you know? It was mm -hmm. just better than some of the other um, middle of the road priced yarns out there. I just really liked it. And yeah, it's more, it's more expensive than like um, Cascade Eco, but it wasn't as expensive as, you know, like Brooklyn Tweed. You know, like there's, it, it hits a really nice price point. Do they make it? I think they make it. I don't think they make all the weights they used to make. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, they still have, Ella Ray still has a lot of great yarn out there, but I just happened to, everywhere I would go, I would buy Chunky, and then I went out when it was being discontinued and just kind of searched for it, and if a store had, you know, somewhere had two stains or whatever, I just bought it all, because I thought I could always stripe it into things and use it up. And it does work for hats or anything you'd want to make. Maybe for that, could you weigh your skeins and go that way? Oh, absolutely. Which is, would have been a good plan before I cast on. Right? Like, I was just, I was just thinking then maybe if you knew you had 90 grams, then maybe you could, you know, oh, a third, a third, and a third. For sure. For sure. And I, you know, I wasn't really trying to make a rainbow, but it, you know, it could look really rainbowy. I think it would be really cute. It's beautiful. I love it. And I could definitely do just stripes on the yoke and do the body solid because I have several of these colorways, you know. Oh, so, well, that would be fun too. It might look like one of those. Is that called the Camaro sweater? I know yes. it's at a point, yeah. but you could do something like just, that. Yeah, oh, I well, could just do something like that too. It, that would just, take a lot. Of there plan. was no plan, right? It was like, get all of the yarn, cast on no real plan and I'm going to make it random except you can't make it random if you don't have enough right like yarn to finish it in a certain in some of the colors that you have I loved this color I have I've made it a bunch of things out of the the maroony color but so like you said the bag had a lot of yarn in it but but no there's no more maroon in the bottom I'm still digging yarn out of the bottom of this bag <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was really nice to talk to you today. Yes, you too. I love it. And thanks for joining us, guys. We'll do it again if everybody liked it. But if you don't like it, don't tell us. Yeah, don't tell us. Then, <laughs> then it was just for us, and we just <laughs> chatted and, and got our whips out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I'll, I'll get on you, though, so you finish some of them. So, see? I'm glad I got to see them. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs>